Hello everyone. Today we are going to have a small chit chat on the evolving role of traditional media and social media in elections. We have Mr. Shashank Bengali, the South Asia Bureau correspondent, Los Angeles Times, with us. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. It's good to have you here. Uh, how is Hyderabad, sir? It's good. Uh, very short visit, but I'm enjoying it. It's my second time, so I'm very happy to be back. Okay. Uh, coming to this questions part. Uh, what is the importance of current election campaign than the earlier election campaigns in USA? Uh, this campaign has been very uh, interesting because it features two people, uh, two main candidates who are very well known to Americans. Uh, Hillary Clinton has been uh, famous in the U.S. for 25 years as a first lady, as a senator, and then as secretary of state. Donald Trump, of course, famous as a television host and uh, and, uh, and real estate uh, investor. Um, so we've seen a campaign that's really been about personalities more than about uh, substance, unfortunately, this time around, uh, with a lot of very um, uh, heavy attention being paid on uh, various insults that uh, they've been giving one another. And um, I think, unfortunately, the, the sort of personality factor has detracted a bit from the issues of the so how you how do you see the nature of the campaign this time? I mean, I'm talking about the nature of the campaign. Is it uh, quite informative like the last time, or this is less informed than the, what Barack Obama faced earlier? I think uh, compared to 2012, certainly it's a lot less um, substance, much more about personality, uh, much more about uh, sound bites and uh, media portrayal. And in the case of Trump, is uh, so many. People questioning uh, whether he's fit to hold office, uh, all the allegations about uh, uh, his mistreatment of women, his uh, record of, uh, of, uh, of very uh, questionable statements. Uh, and uh, I think if you look back four years ago, you had Barack Obama, who was the incumbent president, and you had Mitt Romney, who was uh, known as a governor and as a businessman. And you had an issue, a debate that was really about the issue. You had, uh, you know, discussion about the U.S. economy, which was really the fundamental driving uh, force among voters that year. And this year, um, you know, you have some discussion about immigration, uh, which is a big issue in the U.S. But really, it's it's come down to media, it's come down to personalities, it's come down to insults. So I think it's not been a very uh, substantive campaign so far. Uh, the Donald Trump has to say that there is so much outrage against Donald Trump this time. He also says that uh, he is mostly negatively shown in the news. This thing, do you agree with this? With his stand that he is uh, more negatively shown in the TVs and uh, in the media. I think it's true, but uh, he's really complaining uh, about the media quoting him directly. You know, the media is using things that he has said, things that he has done, uh, and just put that out there for people to scrutinize and to, uh, to look at. So I don't think his criticism really um, draws a lot of, uh, of seriousness. Um, if you look at uh, what he's actually saying, uh, he, he's complaining that the media is biased, but uh, there's not been really any example you could point to uh, where the media has distorted his words or, or uh, or, or, or try to take uh, anything you know beyond what he's actually said. Right. He said these things. Uh, we have kind of uh, collected few analytics, data analytics regarding this uh, campaign of both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, which says that Trump's name is uh, used uh, like thirty percent more times than mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton's name, and Trump also says that he has like seven million followers on Twitter, so he literally owns one other uh, another New York Times with his accounts. So he himself quoted this. Uh, so why is this happening? I mean, the data analytics part, his, uh, do you think this is, uh, this has something to do with his uh, money flow or something like the... How he's able to get so many so followers? Many, yeah. Well, I think uh, to some degree, you know, no question he has a very uh, rabid, uh, following among uh, you know 30 to 40 percent of the country he, he's still despite all of his controversy he's still uh, you know polling at about 40 percent of of, uh, of the U.S. electorate that supports him so 
no question he has a lot of supporters. Um, they are probably uh, more fiercely loyal to him than Hillary's supporters, supporters. are loyal to her. So he, he has people who hang on, on his every word. And he also has people who follow him for the pure um, entertainment value of it. You know, no question he has um, a lot of Democrats and, and uh, liberals who, who follow him just to see what uh, you know controversial thing he might say next. I, I just read this morning uh, that there's a, um, a radio host in the U.S. who's a Trump supporter called Bill Mitchell. He's a, a pretty well-known Trump supporter. And he stated on, on Twitter that Trump must be getting more support than the media says because uh, someone reported that uh, the number of Halloween costumes uh, for Trump is way higher than the number being sold for Hillary. So, you know, you can look at any metric and say, okay, he's, he's getting uh, more attention, but the attention probably doesn't translate to, uh, to a vote, and you need to have a vote, not just uh, someone following you on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so many liberal outlets voted for Barack Obama during 2008 elections. Uh, will that vote base convert to Hillary Clinton's this uh, Hillary Clinton's this time? Well, the, the liberal uh, uh, sort of what people say is liberal media. Actually, the media itself, um, the mainstream media, doesn't really support one candidate or the other. The uh, various news organizations have editorial boards that then give an endorsement uh, for a candidate. And this year, I think of the 50 top newspapers in the country, all but one. Uh, have given their endorsement, their editorial board endorsement to uh, Clinton, and that's uh, uh, unprecedented. Normally, it's uh, maybe 30 to 30-20 to uh, split. So um, I think it reflects that um, educated voters, again, the, those who are on editorial boards are educated uh, people, and, and as far as uh, if you look at the breakdown in polling, educated voters college with college degrees and higher are supporting Hillary Clinton by huge margins. And these voters are reflected in the editorial boards. Now, there is still, you could say, a huge segment of the country that uh, is it, it has uh, lower levels of education and doesn't read those endorsements. So um, we shouldn't read too much into those endorsements. They reflect um, that there is strong support for her, um, but it also means that, uh, it doesn't mean that there are not, uh, those who would support Trump uh, in other uh, demographics in the country. Uh, do you think this uh, the social media support is very high for Hillary Clinton this time at uh, present day? What happens is, uh, do you think these social media uh, voters will come down and vote for Hillary eventually? Because what happens in India is the person who doesn't own a mobile phone decides the fate of the country mm. in India. This thing happens. Is it the same there, or uh, do you think these followers uh, they come to the polling vote and vote on the voting day? I mean. In India, it is around 65% voting done. Mm -hmm. uh, how different it is uh, compared to USA? Well, U.S. voter turnout is much less, uh, unfortunately. Um, only once in the past uh, several um, presidential elections have we reached above 50% uh, of voter turnout, uh, which was in 2008 with uh, Obama's first election. This year, I would be very surprised if it reached that, even though there's so much interest and attention on the campaign. Most people are following it for uh, entertainment reasons. And um, I think a lot of people, if you look at the two candidates, two major candidates, they have very high levels of, um, of uh, people disliking them personally. So a lot of voters are turned off by the length of the campaign, how dirty it's gotten, um, all the, uh, the kind of controversial statements, and, and uh, they're just not going to turn up. So, um, as far as social media support, I think, you know, like you said, Trump has a lot of social media support. Uh, Clinton does as well. Um, I think, you know, each side has their really uh, strong bases of support. And in the middle of the sort of 10, 20 percent who are undecided, that's where the election will be determined. The recent debate about the gun policy rules in the USA has been a major point in these elections. So, so whom do you support on this aspect? Uh, gun policy rules. Is it uh, uh, Mrs. Clinton or uh, Trump? Well, I, I don't have a personal uh, candidate that I support um, in this election. Um, I do feel that many Americans believe that we need some form of legislation that would limit how guns can be used. 
Um, nobody is arguing, not, neither Clinton nor Trump uh, is saying that the uh, U.S. Uh, constitutional right for an individual to, uh, to possess weapons will be changed. You know, Trump has accused Clinton of trying to repeal that amendment to the Constitution, and, and she has said she won't. So that's a, a false statement from Trump. Um, I don't see Hillary Clinton uh, really making a huge change on this issue. I think what you might see is uh, efforts to change laws about how much ammunition you can buy, uh, whether you could institute some sort of um, uh, you know, restrictions on what kind of person can buy a gun. She has said that if you are somebody who is listed on a watch list um, that shouldn't be allowed to fly in an airplane, then you shouldn't be allowed to buy a gun. Now, there are those who say that those watch lists are also unconstitutional because they are not transparent. No one knows how they get onto a watch list and no one knows how you get off a watch list. So uh, she will have a hard time, I think, convincing liberals to support that policy but I think she may be able to find some consensus if she wins between Republicans and Democrats on some sensible uh, uh, reforms to, to gun laws, which I think are, are really very important. Uh, coming to this uh, visa part of the Indian staying in America, Trump earlier had a different stand that uh, the job should belong to American who stays here. And later, later on uh, the due course of his campaign, he eventually st changed his stand that even Indians are important. He even did a Hindu this thing the other day. So, what would you say? I mean, uh, if Hillary or Trump c comes to power, what would be the situation of Indians who are uh, uh, staying and or for study purpose in America? Would that change or uh, uh, something would happen? I don't see much of a change for Indians who are on valid visas in the U.S. either studying or, or working. Um, I don't think uh, either candidate uh, would change uh, the visa regime. Um, you know, I think Indians have complained for some time that getting visas in the U.S. is very difficult. Um, unfortunately, I don't see that changing anytime soon. The current mood in America is such that um, immigration is such a hot button issue that uh, both candidates are reluctant to say that they would expand the number of visas. Um, I don't see any major change happening. And Indians also are not really affected by um, this pressure that the U.S. is facing for immigration from uh, the uh, you know, Latin American countries, Mexico and, and other countries in, in Central America. Um, India is a, a different uh, region, of course, and Indian, uh, Indians who come to America typically come for uh, studying or working. There's not so many cases of Indians uh, who come for uh, illegal purposes. Um, but uh, I don't see much change. If anything, um, I think Indians could benefit because uh, they are always seen as uh, immigrants who come to the U.S. and then contribute in a positive way. So I think uh, as the U.S. and Indian governments have a stronger relationship, uh, you know, you've seen how President Obama and Prime Minister Modi have had many meetings over the last couple of years. The relations are improving between the two, the two leaders. Uh, I'd see that the India-U.S. relationship would continue to go in a positive direction uh, under either Clinton or Trump, and I think that could mean perhaps um, more allowance for Indian visas and for America as well. Uh, free media is considered as a watchdog of democracy. So there are so many independent media owners who are uh, alleging that they are facing a crisis this time in USA. Your comment about this? Uh, I'm sorry, about, about free media, uh, yeah. owners of media. Yeah, owners of independent media thing. The, those articles are not getting recognized as much as a mainstream newspaper does. Mm, right. I, I, I think it's true that mainstream newspapers still get the most um, attention. Mainstream media still gets the biggest audiences. Um, independent media, uh, the sort of, you know, startups and, and small media um, have a long way to go. I think... Um, readers and, and consumers of news still regard, you know, whether it's the New York Times or the LA Times or CNN uh, to be, you know, uh, more trusted, more trustworthy. Um, and when it comes to an election, these are the uh, news uh, organizations that have 
uh, reporters who go on the campaign trail, reporters who do investigative journalism, uh, reporters who investigate how the candidates are financing their campaigns. So I think voters are looking for really solid information, and I think that still really comes from the media companies that have the staff to really cover these issues closely. Donald Trump in his third debate openly says that if he doesn't win, he says the elections are rigged. Uh, do you think that a candidate of that stature, who is front, who is almost a front runner, or is competing at for the U.S. presidential election, do you think? I mean, were there were there loose com comments, or uh, what does it say about his character? I don't know if it was a loose comment. He certainly has um, maintained that stance in the last week since the debate. He's had um, a number of his uh, surrogates, his his children, his campaign manager, who have not really backed off of that comment. So I think um, that is what he believes, or that is what he says. Now we'll have to judge whether he's doing it for shock value, whether he's doing it to um, rally his supporters to make them really believe that the election is rigged. I, I do think it's a very dangerous comment. We've never had um, an election in the U.S. that's been rigged. You could argue that in 2000, when, uh, when uh, Al Gore and, and George W. Bush had a very close race, um, the Supreme Court made the decision that they were going to stop the recounting of ballots. And at that point, Al Gore, although he fundamentally disagreed with that decision, he uh, very quickly uh, conceded the race. And so uh, even in a case where uh, many still believe that election was stolen from him, he uh, they, they called that it was better to uh, go peacefully than uh, create uh, any sort of crisis. And with Trump, you know, we don't know if he's going to concede. Uh, for example, if the results show um, that he loses, uh, will he give a concession speech? We, we don't know. With social media coming into the picture, uh, so we know, we, we'll be knowing the minute by minute details of whatever is happening, even in India or even everywhere all over the world. So people allege that the objectivity is long gone. The objectivity of the news to carry uh, a journalist carries a news differently than a person who doesn't know the who doesn't do the journalism course or whatever. So a common man carries with a different perception. So any and I mean, how do you view this? The objectivity part of uh, is not present in the social media. It's true. I think um, you know social media is a very free space. Uh, you know anybody can make a comment, anybody can um, post uh, anything they believe, anything they like. Um, I do think, though, that in this election, we've seen um, the main uh, comments on social media that get the most attention are the ones coming from uh, the candidates themselves. So Trump and Clinton um, are still the ones who get the most attention. Um, there are always going to be people out there who uh, you know, whether it's online trolls or partisans who are just spouting off. Um, I think uh, it's, it's troubling um, when those comments get widely uh, shared. And I think uh, we have to be very careful not to get caught up in that uh, sort of, uh, you know, unsubstantiated rumors and, and uh, fear mongering. Um, but the media, I think the, the news media has done a good job of separating uh, what's really true and what's not. As I said to you in the beginning, um, the media, for the most part, has just been, um, you know, replaying what the candidates themselves have said. You know, Trump has said these things about he won't accept the results of the election. Um, he has said uh, demeaning things about women, and those comments are uh, just replayed uh, verbatim. So I think, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to say that uh, that uh, that something is being uh, slanted when it's actually just quotes being uh, replayed over and over, direct quotes. Uh, so uh, there is a question on Hillary Clinton. Uh, Hillary Clinton and her associates are long known for the hatred for the press. For the press. For the press, hatred for the press. Uh, do you agree with this, I mean? Well, I think um, they're very skeptical of the press because uh, going back to her time as first lady, uh, when she, her husband was president uh, in the 1990s, she was given a very bad time by the media. Um, she was... You know, she was a, a very uh, important figure in the U.S. in that she was the first, I could say one of the first uh, women to be first lady who actually did not just have a ceremonial role. You know, typically in the in U.S. history, the first lady picks out the 
China pattern and uh, hosts events for children and is responsible for the menus at, at state dinners and those big functions. Um, Hillary Clinton, who was a brilliant lawyer in her own right before her husband became the president, she was given the task of um, trying to reform the healthcare system. And that was a very controversial thing. Nobody was used to seeing a first lady, unelected first lady, take on such a role. And I think she had, uh, and she didn't do a very good job with it. I think she herself would admit that she made some mistakes in how she uh, pursued that, um, that uh, program. And therefore, she got a lot of bad press. And um, there was a large segment of the media, you know, both right-wing media and uh, sort of independent, impartial media, um, that covered her very critically. And I think from that point on, then, of course, her husband was impeached because of the scandal with the, the White House intern. So I think she left the White House with a very bad taste in her mouth about how the media would cover her. And uh, therefore, she has held the media at an arm's length for most of the campaign. She's held relatively few press conferences. Uh, she's been you know, much preferred to uh, give her message in rallies as opposed to in interviews with, with media. I think that's changing a bit as um, her lead has become uh, bigger. She's let her guard down a bit. She now allows the press to occasionally travel with her on her own plane. She's taken more questions. She's been a bit more willing to meet with uh, media for, for you know, unscripted interactions and news conferences. So um, I think uh, we'll see uh, if she's elected. I think we'll see her continue to sort of be very wary and very skeptical. But I don't think it's fair to say that she's anti-press. I think she's very, very skeptical of the press and will use the press in the way that's going to be to her biggest advantage. And that's something I think that's true of politicians in many countries. Right. Uh, stand on stand of Indian voters in the U.S. Do you want to appeal something or uh, do, do you know what is the trend going on? Well, most polls suggest that Indians in America, both uh, uh, you know, throughout the country, tend to lean Democratic. Uh, most Indian voters in the U.S. Uh, who are uh, U.S. citizens and able to vote, uh, they tend to be, uh, you know, for Democratic candidates. Uh, this is partially because um, they're living in urban areas, and urban areas tend to go uh, more for Democrats. Uh, it has to do also with uh, Democrats' support for social programs that Indians tend to support. Um, there are certainly Indians who support Trump. Uh, Trump had this rally in New Jersey and one of the big Indian American communities. And, and his a, uh, daughter is planning this Diwali festival. Correct, yeah, she'll be attending a Diwali festival. So they're certainly trying to appeal, and I, I personally know of uh, some uh, families and friends in America who are voting for Trump who are Indian, uh, of Indian origin. So I would say it's uh, mostly Clinton, but certainly some Trump supporters among that community as well. You must be watching the House of Cards. I've seen House of Cards, yes. Is it a similar thing, what's, it, what's <laughs> happening in the White House? Or the I haven't House? seen the last season, I have to say. I, I only watched the first uh, maybe one and a half seasons. But, um, I mean, it's House of Cards is a very entertaining show. Uh, you know, I think it probably gets, I would say, 10% of things correct in terms of, uh, yes, you know, there are uh, there is a cozy relationship at times between some reporters and some politicians. Um, but of course it's dramatized and I don't think we've ever seen that level of, uh, of scandal. Uh, you know, who knows? Things are moving in a direction maybe we will one day, but thankfully so far we haven't gotten to that point. It's just good television, uh, but not reality. Uh, Pre-polls, how much can you trust the pre-polls there in the USA and what is the current trend according to you till date? No, I mean, you must be knowing because you're an internal person of this thing. But we're knowing what are the trends going on, how much percentage is both uh, Trump and Hillary. Right. The, the averages are now, Hillary has roughly, um, you know, six to ten percentage point lead if you look at the national right. polling, uh, which most people focus on. But the more important polls come in the individual states, because in America, you have uh, the president chosen by states. And basically, in order to win, you have to get a certain number of electoral votes from a certain number of states. So California, being the biggest state, has 55 electoral votes, and you need to have 270 to win. So if you win the most votes in California, you get all of the 55 or maybe 58 votes that California has out of those 270. So you've already made a big 
stride toward your threshold. Um, but the biggest states, California, New York, um, have traditionally gone Democratic. And in this election as well, they'll go Democratic. So Hillary has wrapped those up. Now, if the election comes down to, say, 10 states that the vote is very close. So Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, Indiana, many others, where Hillary and, and Trump are, say, within a couple of points. Hillary's ahead in some, Trump is ahead in some. Um, the current poll suggests that Hillary is ahead in enough of those what we call swing states that swing the election that she will comfortably reach the 270 threshold. Uh, she's showing it something like 300 and above, which would be uh, as big or if not bigger than a margin that Obama had uh, four years ago. So she's looking very strong at the moment. Of course, things can change two weeks out, but in the last, I would say, three weeks, we've seen things really break for her in a, in a dramatic way, where she now has a very comfortable lead. Are you Republican by heart or Democrat? Uh, I'm independent. You know, as a journalist, I try to stay impartial. Um, you know, I don't reveal who I vote for because I may have to cover these candidates as a journalist. I used to work in Washington and cover the Obama White House. and. Um, I certainly have my share of run-ins with the Obama White House, uh, with their uh, press team. You know, they're also very, uh, you know, they're, they're very uh, careful to um, make sure that their view is getting out. And if they find the media to be unfair, they uh, they they don't work with you, or, or they, they can make your job a bit difficult. So I uh, I try not to give my opinions publicly, but I will say that I think it would be very historic and a very important milestone for America if uh, Hillary Clinton became the first uh, female president. That's something that uh, would be a very important message to send, not just to Americans and to American women, that this is something that, that we can finally put aside that barrier from the first black president to the first female president would be a, a very, I think, historic moment. Um, but I also think as a message to the world that uh, we've had so many countries, um, uh, India, Pakistan, Israel, uh, Bangladesh, so many others that have had uh, female leaders, and I think uh, it's high time in the U.S. after 240 years, uh, it's probably about time that we uh, broke that glass ceiling. Uh, one last question before ending. Uh, what's your favorite dish? I mean, you come to Hyderabad, have you tasted the biryani here? I've had the biryani, yes. Uh, I like the biryani very much. Uh, but I really like uh, the, the bitai, the Hyderabadi bakery uh, bitai. So, uh, I didn't have time to go to the shop, but there's one at the airport, so I will be sure to pick up a box and retire for my wife on the way home, for Diwali especially. So. Yeah, before ending, something you want to say about, uh, to our viewers, especially from the college-going students, something you want to appeal about the elections or something? I think it's great that uh, people around the world, uh, in India and other countries, are uh, really paying attention. I, I hope that uh, there are some lessons to be learned about elections and media coverage and democracy from the U.S. elections. Um, as I said to, to the, uh, the audience here earlier during the discussion, uh, it's not been the most uplifting campaign, a lot of mud slinging, a lot of insults. So um, I hope that people who watch these elections from around the world don't uh, feel that uh, this is something dirty. It's still, um, you know, we're a work in progress. After 240 years, we're still very much a work in progress in America and India as a 70 year old democracy is certainly going in a, in a good direction. We hope that um, you know our countries can learn from one another as far as uh, doing a better job of reflecting what the, the people want. Thank you sir, it was a pleasure talking to you. My pleasure.